The other day I saw a really cool video that got me back in Arduino hacking after about a year and a half hiatus. That video showed an Arduino being used to drive a very long RGB LED strip of a kind I hadn't seen before. In this video I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about it and show you some of the things I learned along the way. First thing I learned, don't use an Arduino Uno, it doesn't have enough memory. You will be using the Fast SPI library most likely and that, plus any small demo program will just about max it out as it is. Instead, get an Arduino Mega or something like that to do it. The second thing you're going to do is get the LED strip itself. The LED strip is composed of WS2811 LEDs. Those LEDs come 60 to a meter, and uh, in this case I got a weatherproof strip and everything, two meters of it, on eBay for about 60 bucks. You can probably get it cheaper elsewhere, like uh, directly from China, but if you do that, just be aware that you know it's going to take quite a bit longer to get it, and I can't tell you what the quality will be like. In my case, these worked out quite well. The next thing I, the next thing about these is they are daisy chained, uh, single wire data, unlike the 2801, which had I believe two wire data. These are uh, single wire, and so you know you, your timing constraints are a lot tighter on this than anything else. I think you could daisy chain quite a bit of these before you'd run into. Um, latency issues from one end to the other, but um, nonetheless, pretty cool. Um, it's all parallel 5 volt power supply, so you got two wires for voltage and ground and one for the data. That said, these can also be cut apart if later you want to do something involving uh, you know, individual pieces or smaller strips. The other thing to consider is for every 60 meter, or sorry, for every one meter length, which is 60 LEDs, your dissipation's at peak about 14 or 15 watts. That's quite a bit of power, more than you're going to get out of a wall adapter or anything like that. So what I did was not wanting to buy a uh, basically a bench power supply yet, and I'm going to build one probably out of a PC power supply at some point, but I figured, well, PC's already got a power supply, why not just use it? So here you can see that I've taken the uh, accessory wire out and run it out of the computer case. I have connected it and hooked it right into the breadboard. If you do this, you're going to probably want to fuse that thing. Me, I'm daring, so I didn't fuse it. So far, so good, though. I'm getting a nice, solid 5.02 volts out of it. Um, and basically, that's it. Um, the strip itself has weatherproofing and everything on it. It has connectors already on it. I jammed those into the motherboard. I'm sorry, into the breadboard as best I could. Um, wired it all up, loaded up program. You'll see some links to these things on the uh, video as I post it. Um, hooked it all together and set it to working. So let's see what it does. Um, let me turn off the light here so that we can see it a little bit better. And plug in power, switch over to the uh, Arduino Mega, and off it goes. Woohoo, and it works. You will see that. Uh, and this full draw, it's pulling down about 4.85, pulling the voltage down about 4.85 on that bus, which is kind of hefty. Um, again, you want to have enough power to drive the whole thing. Oh, as you're watching this, you'll probably see some cutouts where the uh, strip looks like it's got some, you know, dead bulbs or whatever. It really doesn't. Um, as you can see here, everything's lit up correctly. It's just the program I'm using only allows for really was only created to run 30 of these and I'm running 120 of these LEDs. But notice you can go back and forth, you can do all kinds of cool little tricks with this. And again, the latency end-to-end -end is negligible until you get to several hundred, probably in the thousand range, I'm guessing. Um, read more about that online as well. So, um, other things to note, um, if you're going to try to put a breadboard on a board like I did here, you probably want to use some washers on the screws. That's about it, really. I mean, the thing just worked. I couldn't quite believe it. As long as you don't manage to burn out your power supply, you can pull this off. I personally recommend building or using a bench-type power supply. They're pretty easy to cobble together. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good time trying to do it yourself.